so far all our results have been general and abstract we have not concentrated much on concrete functions except for a few modules that dealt with certain properties of polynomials and briefly with trigonometric and exponential functions in this last lap of this course i am going to fix this lacuna let me first introduce the exponential function which is probably one of the most important functions from all of mathematics without further ado let me just state a theorem theorem there is a unique function f from r to r with the following properties with the following properties number 1 f of 0 is equal to 1 number 2 f prime of x equal to f of x for all x in r so there is a unique function which takes the value 1 at 0 and whose derivative is itself proof now that we are masters of power series this is a fairly easy thing to do define define f of x is equal to summation n equals 0 to infinity x bar n by n factorial okay now the question is if this series converges then what is its derivative let's first assume that the series converges let's compute its derivative well f prime of x prime of x we know that if a power series converges then in the interval of convergence you can do term by term differentiation so this will be summation n equals 1 to infinity n x bar n minus 1 by n factorial which you can just see is just summation n equals 0 to infinity x bar n by n factorial okay and it's also clear that f of 0 is equal to 1 that is also trivial to see so all we have to show is that this function f converges at every point of the real numbers now there are several proofs of why this series converges i suggest that you spend a nice monsoon afternoon contemplating various proofs let me give the simplest not the one that uses the least number of tools but the simplest according to me apply ratio test apply ratio test well what do you get when you apply ratio test you get x bar n plus 1 by n factorial uh, sorry n plus 1 factorial n plus 1 factorial divided by x bar n by n factorial okay well what happens to this you just get uh, n factorial and n plus 1 factorial the n factorial part will get cancelled you will get x divided by n plus 1 okay which of course converges to zero as n approaches infinity for any fixed x for any fixed any fixed x therefore for each x the ratio test te test tells you that it is convergent therefore the power series converges at every point of the real numbers in other words the radius of convergence of the power series is infinity okay so we have we have shown existence we have shown existence well what about uniqueness of this power series well what you do is let g be another function another function that satisfies that satisfies 1 and 2 we have to show that f is equal to g how are we going to do that first we will show that any function that satisfies 1 and 2 never is is never zero claim if g satisfies 1 and 2 1 and 2 g of x is not equal to zero for all x and r well why is this the case well because because 
look at look at g of x times g of minus x look at g of x times g of minus x look at this new function call it h of x call it h of x differentiate differentiate this h well by product rule what do you get you get g prime of x times g of minus x minus g prime of minus x times g of x okay i hope i have done the differentiation correctly well g prime uh, uh one moment this is just it is i to be 100% precise uh this is just let me just clarify because there might be a bit of confusion if i write it like this this is derivative of g evaluated at the point x so i'm i'm writing bar and x at bottom to sort of say that i'm first taking the derivative then evaluating at the point x times g of minus x i'm just applying the product rule then i have to differentiate g of minus x which by chain rule is just minus g prime so that's why there is a minus sign so it's minus g prime but this time evaluated at minus x evaluated at minus x into g of x okay but we know that g prime is just g right so this is just g of x g of minus x minus g of minus x g of x okay so the reason why i introduced this notation of evaluating at the point x is to make sure that when i write g prime of minus x you don't think it is oh i have to differentiate the function g prime of minus x which is minus g prime of minus x which is which will sort of lead to confusion so that's why i'm introducing this notation now this or oh, everything just cancels and you get zero okay so what does this tell us well this tells us that this tells us that tells us that h of x is a constant is some constant let's say k which means g of x into g of minus x is just this constant k okay which means which means and wait a second uh, we can even determine what this constant is determine what this constant is setting k equal to 0 uh, sorry setting x equal to 0 we get we get k equal to 1 okay so g of x into g of minus x is 1 which means g of x is never 0 is never 0 okay so this proves the claim that any function that satisfies properties 1 and 2 is never 0 now what we do is consider f by g consider the function f by g f and g are both functions that satisfy the properties 1 and 2 now differentiate f by g differentiate this okay now i'm not going to bother doing the derivative just by the fact that f prime equal to f and g prime equal to g you will immediately conclude that the derivative is 0 okay because the numerator will have fg prime minus f prime g so this will be 0 so what this shows is that f by g is some constant k so f is actually k times g now that means f of 0 is k times g of 0 or in other words k is equal to 1 so we have shown that f is identically equal to g okay so uniqueness is established uniqueness is established we have also got a useful fact about this function f which came out in the proof the fact that f of minus x is just f of x inverse okay please keep this in mind this will be very very useful okay now we already know that f of x is not zero for all x that is also something that came out in this proof and we also know that f of zero is equal to one therefore by intermediate value theorem because f is of course a continuous function it's in fact 
given by a power series so it's a smooth function by intermediate value theorem by intermediate value theorem f is never negative f is never negative okay so the function f whose existence and uniqueness we have established in this theorem also is always a positive function okay now f prime of x is just f of x right which means derivative derivative is positive positive for all x right the derivative is a positive function this means this means f is a strictly increasing function which we have seen in the various theorems that we have established in the part on calculus uh, differentiation the part on differentiation okay so f is a strictly increasing function not only that f double prime is also equal to f prime is also equal to f is also positive is also positive which just goes to show that f is convex upwards is convex upwards okay putting all of this together we get the familiar graph of the exponential function at zero it is one and the function is sort of going to look like this okay so i have drawn it badly it should actually be more steep should actually be more steep so let me try to rectify i will not say i will rectify it for sure something like this should be steeper this is the roughly the graph of uh, the exponential function as we can see from all the facts that we have the fact that it's strictly increasing it's convex upwards at zero it's one uh, so on and so forth okay now another property of the exponential function that you are familiar with is f of x plus y is f of x times f of y okay now you will notice that i am going to prove everything from the two properties in the previous theorem that f of 0 is equal to 1 and f prime is equal to f so what i'll do is fix a fix a and consider and consider consider g of x to be f of a plus x okay now differentiate g prime of x would be just f of a plus x f of a plus x times what is inside sorry it's f prime at a plus x times the derivative of what is inside by chain rule but the derivative of what is inside is just one so g prime of x is just f prime of a plus x again for clarity let me just write let me just write f prime evaluated at a plus x f prime evaluated at a plus x which is just f of a plus x which is equal to g of g of x okay now if you go through the argument that we gave to show that if there is another function g that satisfies both 1 and 2 then we must have that f is k times g right and then we used property one to show that that k is one so here we have a function g that's just satisfies property two the fact that g prime equal to g with that just that property alone we will be able to show that f of x equal to k times g of x that we will be able to show we will not be able to show that g uh, this k is equal to one because we don't know that g of zero is equal to one but this is a start now substitute x equal to 0 and let's see what happens in the previous proof k dropped out to be 1 substitute x equal to 0 so what you get is 1 is equal to k times g of a right because we have substituted x equal to 0 and g of x is just f of a plus x so sorry this should be this should be f of a not g of a this should be f of a okay fine which just goes to show that k k is nothing but nothing but 
1 by f of x. Okay, that means that means what we get is uh, f of x is equal to g of x by f of a or in other words g of x is f of x times f of a which just goes to say that f of a plus x is f of x times f of a okay hence proved hence proved okay so we ultimately wanted to show that f of x plus y equal to f of x plus f of y we have just fixed y to be a and proceeded with this argument so ultimately we have got the product property of exponential functions now inductively we can now inductively using this fact using this fact using this fact we can show we can show that f of n times a n in the natural numbers is nothing but f of a power n okay this is certainly true when n equal to 1 when n equal to 2 we just say f of a plus a is just f of a squared that is what the previous result is saying inductively it's easy to show this okay now set set e to be equal to f of 1 okay define e to be f of 1 we have already analyzed analyzed this this number in a module in an earlier module in particular we have shown that this e is actually an irrational number we have actually shown that this e is an irrational number so what our theory so far says is that e e power n e power n is nothing but f of n a excellent we also know that f of minus n a is e power minus n this also follows from the fact that f of minus x is just f of x inverse because of that we get f of minus n a equal to e power minus n so what we have got is at least for certain quantities at least for certain quantities uh, just a moment this is not there is there is no a in these uh, equations it's just sorry about this but e power n is f of n and f of minus n is e power minus n so at least for all integers for all uh, x in z x in z we have this e power x is equal to f of x okay so by analogy by analogy we represent we represent we represent f by f of x by e power x okay note very carefully what is going on i am not saying that the function f whose existence and uniqueness we have proved is actually exponential but with base e power x that's not what i'm saying we have not yet defined what power x means when x is just any real number we know how to define exponential uh, taking power to a natural number we also know how to do it for a rational number but we don't yet know how to do it for a real number we have just informally defined it using logarithms as and when needed in earlier modules but the purpose of this particular set of modules is to make all that rigorous okay so by analogy we are representing f of x by e power x that's all okay that's all we are doing now i'm going to leave you with an exercise i'm going to leave you with an exercise show rigorously rigorously just using just using e power x equal to summation n equals 0 to infinity x power n by n factorial that that limit limit x going to infinity e power x by x power n is equal to infinity so for each fixed n each fixed n we have already established this we have already established this but i want you to show this just by 
using the power series expansion okay just by using the power series expansion okay so these are all the properties these are all the properties of exponential that will be needed in this uh, i mean that's not not just needed that's usually needed in practice the exercises contain more uh, more um, properties of the exponential function that you can prove either directly from the power series expansion or better just by using properties 1 and 2 in the big theorem we proved in the beginning of this module this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on the exponential function mm -hmm.